So uh, we got to go ahead and introduce Robert Quick Ballstick. We got to do it quick. Ladies and gentlemen, it is 1047 and uh, his session is going to bring us right to Jackie Lappin. We have very, very little time to spare. We got to make sure we get to all the, as Dean says, chocolatey goodness that we have for you today. And let's hear it. Robert Quick Bostick, CEO of Humor Point. Hmm. What is this? There's an old joke among speakers where, um, you know, there, there's this uh, conference and there's a, a guru standing on the stage and he's teaching everybody how to become professional, highly paid motivational speakers. And someone raised their hand in, in, in the back and says, you know, uh, during my speech, do I have to be funny? And the, the guru answers this way. Well, you only have to be funny if you want to get paid. And the joke basically illustrates a truth. People expect to be entertained. Humor is the straightest path to rapport building, to likability. And uh, there is also another phrase that we have in the speaking business when it comes to back of the room sales. And that is this, say something funny and then ask for the money. Because that laughter puts them the audience in a state where they are receptive to what you are about to hear. So even if you think you're not funny, even if you think you can't incorporate humor into your presentations, or maybe you're just looking for just the right joke or the right bit for your next big talk, Robert has a quick and easy solution to share with us today. Here he is, ladies and gentlemen, Robert Quick Bostick. With the title, Want More Money? Be More Funny. And I can't, I can't without, without the cheer, right? Can't do it without the cheer. Hey, Robert, hey, Robert. welcome to the Next Stage Speaking Summit. Super excited to have you. Thank you. I'm excited to be here, Tim. Cool. So let's dive right in, man. Tell me a little bit about your philosophy when it comes to connecting with audiences. Uh, you know, my feeling is that uh, when I speak or when anybody speaks, it's really important to uh, make people feel as good as possible, as fast as possible. Uh, my view is that when people are listening to you speak, they have a lot of things they're bringing to the table. Uh, they may have concerns about you. They may have judgments about you. They may uh, be thinking they should be doing something else. So they need to be uh, relaxed and calm down and ultimately even feel good that they're there listening to you. And so it's, it's, a, it's an important first thing on the checklist of a speaker. And I don't think really a lot of speakers are aware of how critical it is to get their audience to feel good about them. And so what I discovered is uh, that uh, one of the most efficient ways to do that is to get people to smile. And uh, so how do you get people to smile? Well, I don't know how to get people to smile, but it turns out there's people who do know how to get people to smile. And one of the groups of people are cartoonists. Uh, people who have spent their lives when you see these funny memes or uh, a funny little one-liner. There's a lot of things you can do, but my view is that you want to nail that first and foremost, because to the degree you don't take care of that business first, uh, you're just leaving them hanging whether or not they're going to enjoy themselves. And they want to know they're going to enjoy themselves. So. Yeah, I'm absolutely going to push the pause on that, highlight that, uh, put a big yellow highlighter mark on what you just said. Order of business, number one for speakers, <laughs> is to get inside their circle of trust. And, and one of the best ways to do that is, is up that no like, and trust factor. And, and you said it perfectly, Robert, getting them to smile, right? To have that sort of physical reaction of, of liking someone, um, the physical reaction of experiencing some humor. And, and it's an experience that also bonds the audience, not just to you, but to each other. And I got to say, there's a lot of different philosophies on how to open a speech and you want to do it with emotion or you want to do it with, you know, identifying exactly what the problem is that they're dealing with. And, you know, there is nothing better than a good laugh for an audience. <laughs> so tell us a little bit about what it's like for people who hear that, speakers who hear that, and then they think, oh, but, but I'm not a funny person nor do I have that in my dual, I'm not funny whatsoever, and I'm not a funny speaker. But what, what, what advice would you have for them? Well, the first thing is that uh, I'm a very funny person, and I may not feel funny 
in front of an audience. Uh, I may be frightened. I may be stressed. I might be nervous. So I, I don't want to go in front of an audience relying on my sense of humor or my wit or charm. I might be in the mood to be lighthearted and, and, and relatable, but I might not. So that's why I you know, make sure I structure that into the opening of my talk so I can also relax into that first few moments of making everybody feel good and make myself feel good too, because to the degree I get the nice warm response I want, uh, uh, it allows me to relax too and not feel like this incredibly important part of my presentation was such a uh, risky advent- venture that I blew it. And now I'm uncomfortable. Now I want to make sure that I, whatever I decide to do for, to get that initial positive feel good, warm feeling was easy to do. It was, I was confident I could do it and it wasn't a, a stretch. It was just like, boom, boom, work, everybody's smiling. Okay. Stage is set for me now and for them to listen. The beginning of the speech is so important, not just for the audience to get comfortable and situated, but for the speaker to get comfortable and situated. I know I spend more time rehearsing openings than anything else, uh, closely followed by my closings. Uh, But I'll tell you, I've heard this quote from actors over and over and over again. They'll say, drama is easy. Comedy is hard. I can show up uh, tired, exhausted, emotional, and I can do drama. I have to be on point to do comedy. So even if the speaker tells themselves, I am funny, just like you said, Robert, I might not be funny in front of an audience. I might not be funny on that day. I might also not be funny to that particular person or to Mm. that particular audience. And the danger with opening with humor, Robert, is that sense of humor is subjective. So if you tell a joke, then that joke and that sense of humor is sort of paired with you. But if you display a joke Mm. or if you introduce something funny, even if that person doesn't find it funny, it's not gonna rub off negatively on you. They're not gonna have such a close um, association with this person isn't funny. It's, well, that thing isn't funny or wasn't there you funny go. that particular time. There so I uh, just wanted to add that in there. What are, what are, what are some of your thoughts in, in terms of bringing in uh, these types of visual aids and, and as well, you mentioned, cartoonists? So what happened that. was I was at a presentation uh, about nine, 10 years ago. It was uh, in San Francisco. It was a VC meeting uh, and VCs or, you know, entrepreneurs are standing up there trying to raise funds and there's 200 people in the audience. And so you're going to give a 15 minute why your company's doing well and you need more money. Anyway, this, this one guy was doing a presentation and I was starting to snooze. Uh, you know, it became a snooze fest and I could see everybody's kind of snoozing. So I thought, well, let me check my phone out now and see if it's something more interesting than this guy. Uh, and so I'm looking at my phone and, uh, and all of a sudden I start hearing some laughter and I'm thinking, what the heck is going on here? Can't be coming from the stage. Couldn't be that guy. <laughs> And so now, now it's, I, I, just, I figure it's a couple of guys next to me just chuckling at something they said to each other. And now it's starting to become a groundswell in the room. And I'm thinking, what the hell is going on here? So I, I, I don't know. I look up and there's, he's, he's, this guy's displayed a cartoon on the screen, uh, a New Yorker cartoon. And I, I'm thinking, how funny can this cartoon be? I look at it, look at it. It takes about eight seconds to process a cartoon sometimes to really get the genius of it. And by the end of it, I'm bursting into smile. Uh, I'm I'm ro- I'm wrong with everybody, and this is a f- eight second room full of people laughing from zero, <clears throat> and so then at that moment, I thought I had no idea cartoons could transform the mood in a room from bored to engaged and excited. That's power, and so then I went and built a search engine for cartoons so anybody could have that power. Wow. So uh, first and foremost, the power of cartoons, right? I don't think we can dispute that. You had an experience, you had this anecdote that you shared, but I also want you to think about, I don't know, the internet, right? And what people are doing on the internet and what is scrollable content and how people are now accustomed to being made to laugh through this image that they see in a, in a moment, right? Correct. So this is more relevant now than ever. And if you don't have some sort of visual, uh, quick humor in your presentation, uh, it's not just like that's a nice thing to add. It's sort of like if you don't, you're going to be left behind and other presenters uh, are going to be doing it. Audiences are are expecting to, to enjoy and to be engaged. And how are they expecting to do it the same way they do it every single day when they're swiping 
and scrolling. You said, Robert, you built a search engine for these cartoons, these memes. Uh, tell us about this search engine. Uh, I love the search engine. So what happened was I started, I came home that day and said, what the hell? So I went to the New Yorker and started looking at New York cartoons and realized that even though that site's got 70,000 cartoons, they need to be curated because the truth is that people can't spend the time just to willy nilly. They should be looking at the best of the best in any topic they look at. And then I realized the cartoon industry itself does not have a curated platform for itself to market itself better too. So I thought, well, first of all, let me bring everybody together. Let me bring the best cartoons in the world together with people who want to find the best cartoons in the world. And then that way the cartoon industry is more successful and people are more successful in getting what they're hoping to get. So then, but then I realized it's more than New Yorker. There's a variety of platforms out there and they're all loaded full of cartoons that are never seen again. They're shown one time during, you know, an email or on, on the TV, excuse me, on the, in the newspaper, but then they're never to be found again. They're impossible. So I, it took a human being to literally go and find the best of the best of the best. So I, I presented this idea to my friend, Adam Chire, who's the creator of Siri. And I said, I need to build a, a search engine for these uh, cartoons. I had these Google Docs, you know, just, just this crazy. I tried to organize them like topic and everything. And he, by chance, had built a, a search engine he never used or used it very nominally. And he thought, well, all right, let's use it for this. You know what? That sounds exactly like somebody who has uh, the creator of Siri uh, in their resume as someone who just, you know, built a search engine, never really knew what to do with it, just kind of had it laying around. (laughs) (laughs) Sounds very, uh, it sounds right on point for somebody who might, uh, I don't know, design Siri as well. Yeah, yeah. I got nothing better to share. I'm building search engines for just for fun. Uh, so that's what we did. And, uh, and then I built that. And so now, and now, and what happened recently is I started looking at, uh, Facebook, you know, there's certain groups on Facebook for funny content. And I started realizing doing the same, I curate everything. So I mean, I, 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 one out of 10, one out of 20 makes the cut. And, but that one is off the charts. And so, or it's, it's it made me feel good immediately. And I thought that one's going to make the cut. So now the perfect cartoon has the phenomenal cartoons by topic. It could be, uh, you know, um, sales it could be social media it could be presentations whatever it is but they all i've also populated now with some memes and other things that are also choice and it just doesn't matter the bottom line is if the visual causes people to realize okay i'm going to be entertained now i'm going to be delighted now i'm going to be amused and i'm and i'm going to feel better and people kind of have a natural these days you say with the facebook and all these online stuff they're kind of looking for a shot of dopamine here. Okay, this could be a little, little hit of dopamine to lift my spirits right now from the doldrums of my day. And ah, it worked. That's great. In fact, in fact, I'm going to take that. I'm now going to share that with somebody else and share the love and share the good vibe out there. So, I mean, everybody's trying to make people feel a little better here. And, and we should, because that's what else are we doing this life? Yeah, right, right. <laughs> So, you know, it, and, and, and it's so interesting, the, the value of humor in our presentations, right? I mean, we all, as speakers, we should know and understand intuitively the value of humor in our presentations. But what you're adding here, Robert, and the reason I wanted to bring you into the, the Next Stage Speaking Summit is you are adding a way for speakers to not just inject humor, but to inject relevant humor that is a tie back to their content. So it's not just here's a funny thing I saw, but here's a funny thing I saw that's going to lead me into my next point. Here's a funny thing I saw that's going to prove my last point. Here's a funny thing that I saw that is going to maybe even guide the audience to a sale of some kind, um, encourage them to the back of the room. uh, As speakers say, and we're known for saying, a strategy for back of the room selling is say something funny then ask for the money. Say something <laughs> funny, then ask for the money. So humor is a tool that accomplishes all of these things, including putting dollars in our pockets. Now, Robert, I didn't say I was going to do this. I didn't prepare you for this. Uh, and, and maybe doing this on the fly may even work, but it may not work. But what I want to do is I want to show everybody this website, humorpoint.com. This is, this is you, yes? Yes. Or at least the site. Yes. <laughs> I know that's I know that's not you. So um, walk and I, me and through. I'm updating, and I'm updating the site, too. So it may look a little different by the time you guys take a look at it. But now yeah, it's, may, it, and it's a work in progress. Like you said, yeah. you're curating and, and updating. And that's a good thing. Right. It's a good yeah. thing that is going to look different as we record this than it is 
uh, that means it's it's constantly evolving That's and true. updating. So I just want to sort of, uh, is it okay if I kind of look for yeah, an yeah, example please. of uh, uh, how might a speaker use this? Where would I start? Well, I'll give you just a quick example. So uh, first of all, you go, first of all, remember it says humor points. So as you say, when you use humor, you want to have it make a point. That's helpful. <laughs> Otherwise, it's, it's just random. That can be fun too, but better to make a point. Uh, if you go to the, the menu, go to humor tools, just we're underneath the menu of humor tools below right there. So those are some of the tools right there. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just talk so that my screen shows up and uh, they can see both of uh, what what uh, what we're looking at. Right. So if I ho hover over humor tools, the, the menu shows up of cartoons, quotes, GIFs. Fun. Oh, I thought it was pretty much just going to be images, but there's all kinds of stuff here. That's correct. Literally, you can transform your sense of humor with Humor Point. Uh, I mean, wherever you are, it doesn't matter whether you have a sense of humor or not or think you do. Uh, you spend some spend a couple nights here or a couple of nights here instead of on Netflix, you will build ability, your ability to, to present humor will be utterly changed. Love it. Now, Robert, uh, out of curiosity, you mentioned that a lot of this is curated and yeah, all uh, of it's curated. All, <laughs> of, well, all of it is curated for sure. Yeah. Uh, tell us a little bit about the process of curation. It sounds like if you're the one going through and personally reviewing each one of the, the items that are included, sounds like that would be a labor of love. Is there any sort of artificial intelligence helping you? Is there any sort of like metrics like, oh, this image was engaged with a ton or or anything like that? Or is this pure uh, this point, Robert Bostic uh, self-curating? Yeah, this is self-curating. This is, this is a very sharp uh, comedic mind curating. I, wow. I did stand-up comedy for, you know, since college. And uh, and I, you know, I, I've, I've had a mm, humorous mind my whole life. So... Uh, and but I realized that ability was great one on one, but then to actually be able to spot it in other people and to appreciate other people who are able to do the same uh, has caught my attention. And I'm, I think I'm pretty good at that. So um, but if you, for example, if you were to go to the cartoons real quick here, you go up there. All right. So I and, just uh, uh, clicked on cartoons. And again, yep. I'm just going to kind of there you go. And you come down the camera here. switches back to the right place here. There you go. And we're going to go down. In fact, go, you can go back. You can you know, scroll back up again here. So just hit that says search here. The button. Oops, there we go. You're that guy. A search uh, here. Right. So I'm right in the middle. Take search you. here. Cool, cool. Right. So this is going to take you to the search engine itself. And you can zoom in, in a little bit to get a little bit bigger screen. Uh, and we'll just do a fun little quick search here. Uh, my touch screen over there. So zooming in is going to be a go. little there less there simple. Time there we go. <laughs> Go, go to uh, where it says uh, uh, below uh, something search. Uh, there you go. Click the below, below. One, one below. Oh, right advanced there. search. Yeah, right there. That one. Yeah. Right. Try, click that one. All right. So now type in presentations under category. So I clicked advanced search, and then in category, I'm typing in presentations. Just for fun. I mean, you could get you could do it in the other search bar, but this just makes it a little bit more specific. So. Okay, and then I'm hit go. Yep. All right, I'm hitting go. And very, very quickly, 21 pages. 21 pages. He's a lot. So here, here's the, for the first one's the cartoon that I saw. The first one on the left there. there you go. That, that's the one that I saw in the uh, conference that caused this all to happen. I saw that wow. cartoon. And I so this one God. we know is, is, uh, is proven in front of an audience. <laughs> it is proven. <laughs> at, at the it's very proven. least. Uh, and, that's, and that's in the New Yorker. So that goes, if you click on it, it goes right to the New Yorker. And so each one of these goes to where they're to be found. So the idea is now if some if, if an audience loves this cartoon, you can now uh, give someone a, a mug or whatever you want to do. So the idea is to help the cartoon industry as well by doing this. But anyway, and so if you go like to the next one uh, or any of these, right, they're all they're all pretty good. So what you do is you just spend some time, get a cup of coffee and find one you love. I'm, I'm already laughing. Uh, <laughs> this is like sort of that Gary Larson almost kind of humor, the far side. Uh, right, going uh, and it's taught by this this pest, this housefly, this annoying. <laughs> <laughs> and they're teaching each other, um, and and I can see how that would be great in a presentation for salespeople, right? And or or right. great for a presentation for uh, telemarketers, or you know the 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 ones that are perceived <laughs> annoying. And uh, I think I think that would be imagine <laughs> imagine if a salesperson opened up. With that, you know, the bug annoying one. Everybody's gonna laugh. It's gonna reduce the tension, the anxiety, of people that this guy's trying to pitch him. He's saying, "Look, you know, I'm not one of these flies or whatever." So, I mean, if you can make people smile about something they're nervous about or concerned about, you've alleviated that fear. And this one here, of course, is another brilliant piece. You got, you know, these are brilliant, and, and these cartoons—they'll never be seen again if they're not found here because they're just—they're off into the wilderness of these cartoon websites, never to be seen. 
So uh, I'm just going to, uh, again, chat a little here so that the, yeah. the, the, my screen will show. But yeah, highlighting this one with the laser pointer, that, that's an obvious one for speakers to use as well. I used to use that in, in, in my presentations where I would, I would use a laser pointer. Anytime I did, I'd be like, oh, look at so-and-so over here. And I'd make a connection with somebody in the audience, You're like a cat following this thing. And, and then you could pull <laughs> this up on the screen. That's um, funny. That's good. Yeah, these are these are you know genuinely funny cartoons, and and also again the most important part is the fact that it is relevant. All right, so um, this That's seems funny. like be, because it's a labor of love. Oh my gosh, a TED a TED stage. Oh, this is all uh, super usable, super relevant stuff. Yeah, look, look, uh, go, 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 go down, go down for a second. This one here, that guy right here, to the left. That guy. Look at this one. <laughs> Man's heart stops as speaker asks. A, audience to turn to the person next to them <laughs> so um yeah again very usable and and built in built in comedy for sure uh funny or not uh if you're funny or not you can you can build exactly. comedy into your presentations all right robert this is this is um again clearly usable um it, clearly even i mean google came onto the scene because they were uh, and dominated because they were a better search engine this for this purpose is a better search engine than just jumping on Google even. So that's a very specific Best search engine for a very specific purpose uh, yeah. that, that people can use. And what sort of, um, you know, gosh, fees are associated with using that? How can people, uh, how can speakers find this and, uh, and use this with uh, permission? Right, right now, everything on your point uh, is absolutely free for everybody. So the first most difficult part was to build the set of tools and that they function. Uh, then the next phase is that people are using it and sharing it. So one of the hopes, of course, the Purple Cartoons, people say, this is fantastic. And they just share it to, to help other people do the same thing they're doing, which is add more humor to their, to their presentations, their LinkedIn posts. I, I'm finding myself, when somebody says something on LinkedIn, I will, instead of add a comment, I'll find a cartoon that complements their comment or complements their point. And they're like, oh, my God, I love this. Thank you so much. So it's, it's a way of just demonstrating that you have a sense of humor. And, and the fact, if you show, if you share a cartoon that's brilliant, it really hits the point. They're like, who is this person? This person, I love this person. This person's great. So the last thing I'll say about that is very interesting. The science says if you use humor well in a presentation, particularly if you use it at the very beginning, not only does it warm people up and make people feel good and, and feel good about you uh, and, and listening to you and, and reduce their anxiety of being bored, but it also, the science says, it causes them to think really good things about you, that you're intelligent, that you're competent, that you're, that you're confident, right? So not only do you make everybody feel good about inside themselves and you feel good, but they, they make these judgments about you that are wonderfully uh, complimentary. So it's the, the value proposition of humor delivered well, whether it be through a cartoon or funny or just however you get the laugh and the smile, is second to none. That's why all the other techniques you might use to open up a presentation, tell a funny, tell an interesting anecdote, or excuse me, tell an interesting fact, those are good, but none of them <laughs> offer as much to a presenter that well-delivered humor does. A free resource, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> that is fantastic. Gotta love that. Uh, free resource. There we go. There's the crowd cheering. <laughs> looking for that. Uh, so, uh, fantastic. A again, a labor of love, a mission driven. Let's make some people smile, but I love the tip that you slipped in there, Robert. And we're going to sort of wrap up our conversation with the idea that you can use these in your email communication with clients. You can use these in email newsletter. Is this literally really, truly full free permission? Use them anywhere, uh, anyhow, anyway. Okay, now here's between you and me and, and the lamppost, and that is this. What I have done is accessed, I have, I'm giving you a window into these cartoonists world, these cartoonist providers world. I'm giving you a window into all these people's work. Uh, when you, and then you, then, now you can see their work. It's like a pair of binoculars into the wonderful world of, of, of cartoons. But when you find dock your ship and their dock, that's a metaphor, uh, and you click on the um, uh, the thumbnail, the enlarge on the thumbnail and you, in that particular search engine, and you go there, you decide what to do yourself. In other words, they, some of them are asking you to pay for the cartoons. Some of them are promoting them on Facebook and Pinterest. So, you know, you make your own judgment what you want to do. But the, the, what I'm able to do is to take you to the promised land. And gotcha. there, so, so it depends on the image itself, depends on the creator, 
Uh, you are basically playing matchmaker between Thank you. Uh, us and the um, uh, creators of this content. And, you know, if you're going to put it in a book, it's going to be different, I think, than if you're putting it in a PowerPoint slide, which is going to be different, I think, if you're putting it in an email. As or a like LinkedIn a little, post, right. As a little you know? PS or even a LinkedIn post. Right. But yeah, I mean, how easy would it be to say, hey, saw this, made me laugh, made me think of you when, you know, you were talking to me about your upcoming sales meeting. Here's a funny little thing. It is a great way to stay in touch. And I think that tip right there, uh, worth well worth the time people came to uh, to spend with us, uh, Robert, in this presentation Thank of you. the Next Stage Speaking Summit. So uh, it's been super fantastic. Any any closing thoughts? Any uh, anything you want to sort of let people know about, or invite people to, or anything like that? Uh, one last thing on the perfect um, on humor point. There's a section called the the perfect graphic generator, and there you can generate all kinds of wonderful things. Uh, you know, it's phenomenal the things you can do now. So now you can create your own humor, customize personal humor. And, and this is uh, these tools, again, same idea. Someone's built these things. Nobody knows about them. And I've curated all of them, the best of the best together. So all of a sudden now you can, uh, I can have another tool in your bag of tricks. And I'll give you an example. Uh, today, a guy quoted something in a LinkedIn post. I took his quote and I, I built a graphic around it and then re-put one of his lines he did in LinkedIn post into his comments. He's like, oh my God. You know, I said, look, here's your words of wisdom. You know, now... Look, and so uh, simply saying that uh, there we go. So if you go to the top here, so it, and, and again, I'm putting you on the spot here. I didn't tell yeah. you I was going to okay. be doing this live. Would it would it take too long for us to go and create one? But if I go to uh, again humorpoint.com yeah. and the link will be in the chat. Yeah. Uh, I hope fingers crossed that we get that yeah. in the chat in time. But it's pretty simple. Humorpoint.com. No spaces. Yeah. No dashes. And uh, PowerPoint. The, humor point. You know PowerPoint. Humor point. There you go. Right. 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 Uh, we go to graphic generators. You're there right now. There you which are. Which I am on. So you and Einstein. It says create your graphic you can, in seconds. Uh, you can have Albert make things. You can come down here and have. Uh, so what you're saying, I can I can customize these words click. here. That's right. They whatever I want them to say. That's right. Click on that, and all of a sudden takes you that that little tool. Oh my gosh. Okay. So listen, everybody listening right now, <laughs> as speakers, um, this is a great way to put your own quotes, whether or not they're funny. Right. right? Um, you can have your own quotes there. So there he is. Albert Einstein is now writing Tim David's amazing quotes. And you drop it down. That's that easy. It's that simple. That and then is. I can uh, save image as by right clicking right. on my device right. anyway. Or, or just press print it below there. It's, you know, what's this image there? It right? says reset image. Uh, oh, yeah, right reset. Click yeah. Save as to save image. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Either one. But they're very, they're, all these tools, are, all these little, uh, graphic generator, insanely easy to use. I mean, literally no learning curve, no Photoshop lessons, nothing. Oh my gosh. And so, yeah, say, so say, say, all the, all these, uh, all these memes here, I found the photo and then I just teed them up. So if you click on them, they're ready to go. But anyway, and here's, here's, cool. look, here, here's a great story. Great way to stay in touch with clients. Uh, uh, hilarious. Uh, it's hilarious. And, and give uh, me an example. This, I took this million dollar bill the other day and I put it into LinkedIn. I swear to you, I got 800 views. And, and because people get, for whatever reason, it's just like people just love looking at a million dollars. So, I mean, you, you drop this into a sales presentation, you know, I, I can't save you a million dollars, but I can save you 25,000. You know, they're just, it's just this, these visuals just cause people's hearts to skip a beat because they're just so fun and playful. Yeah, it's definitely an eyeball stopper. You know, it'll definitely <laughs> grab people's attention. That is, that is for sure. Isn't that fun? Um, anyway. These yeah, Robert, like I said, uh, this has been a super fun session and uh, super informative, but my goodness, please, everyone listening to this, if you're standing on a stage, if you are delivering content of any kind, I was given advice. Many speakers have heard this quote. Many speakers have passed this quote on. It sounds like this. Hey, speaker mentor, do I really have to be funny in my speeches? No, no, you don't have to be funny as long as you don't want to make any money. <laughs> <laughs> so it is absolutely critical that we engage and entertain our audiences. We know this, uh, but all these other ways of engaging our prospects, engaging our clients, engaging our social media feeds, what a great tool that you have created for us. Uh, right. Robert, again, how can people connect with you? Uh, I, I think it'd be a great idea for uh, people to, to share their ideas with how they are using HumorPoint 
uh, Love it. with you as well. So how can people connect with you? Uh, please, you can, of course, Robert Bostick at humorpoint.com. I'm on LinkedIn. I post almost every day. If you follow me there, you'll learn a lot. I think I've got a new ideas. And uh, you know, one of the things I'm doing right now is I'm doing some case studies on uh, presenters who are successful using humor and particularly using the tools of humor point. So if you'd like to have me work with you, I, right now I'm not charging any presenters right now. At least I've got a handful I'm going to take to see how I can transform your presentations and add humor so that you can finally really feel comfortable that you got the humor thing nailed and you'll learn how to do it yourself. So if, feel free to reach out uh, to have me help you with those, that project too, at no charge to you on the first come first serve basis on a limited time basis for a limited time. <laughs> fantastic again robert uh this has been awesome take him up on that not just the the the, the search engine uh, but also the creator of the search engine helping you curate and specify the content for your presentation uh, also uh, a stand-up uh, person with stand-up comedy experience a person with this sharp comedic mind as as he has said and demonstrated so uh, a great opportunity to inject some humor. Um, get it while you can. All right, Robert, that is our Thanks time for today. So this much. has been Thanks super fun. Uh, I will uh, leave us with the same two words that I end every session with. And those two words are, speak soon. <laughs>